Welcome to section six of neuropathology. In this section, we'll be discussing brain tumors. Let's get started. Before we discuss the types of brain tumors, we first need to know that brain tumors can be metastatic or primary. Metastatic brain tumors are characterized by multiple well-demarcated margins, with common sources being the lung and breast cancer. Primary brain tumors are classified according to the origin of cells, such as astrocytes, meningothelial cells, ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes, or neuroectoderm. One thing to note here is that these primary tumors are locally destructive but rarely metastasize. In terms of location, primary brain tumors are usually supratentorial in adults and infratentorial in children. The supratentorial region, as the name implies, is the area located above the tentorium cerebelli, which is an extension of the dura mater that separates the cerebellum from the inferior portion of the occipital lobes. The infratentorial region is the area located below the tentorium cerebelli. Here's our overview slide of the brain tumors we'll be discussing. Let's begin with glioblastoma multiforme. This is a fast-growing malignant tumor that develops from astrocytes, which are glial cells that regulate the transmission of electrical impulses within the brain. It's the most common primary malignant CNS tumor in adults and is found in the cerebral hemisphere, which can cross the corpus callosum in the shape of a butterfly, which can be known as a butterfly lesion. The term pseudopalisading can be used to describe the central areas of necrosis surrounded by pleomorphic tumor cells. Here's a gross image of the brain in someone with glioblastoma multiforme. Notice how the tumor crosses the midline structure of the corpus callosum and presents in the shape of a butterfly. Here's a histopathological image of someone with glioblastoma multiforme. Notice the region of necrosis surrounded by tumor cells right here. Again, the term pseudopalisating is used to describe this particular appearance. All right, now let's discuss meningioma. This is a benign tumor of arachnoid cells. It's the most common primary benign CNS tumor in adults, especially in females. Patients may present with seizures or focal neurologic signs, depending on the area involved. This occurs because the tumor compresses but does not invade the cortex, and this puts pressure on vital structures leading to seizures and focal neurologic signs. On imaging, a round mass attached to the dura mater can be found. A world pattern along with somoma bodies can also be observed on histology. Here's an MRI of someone with a meningioma. Notice how the mass is attached to the dura mater and is compressing but not invading the cortex. Here's a histological image of a world pattern that can be seen in someone with a meningioma. We can see that quite well, for example, right here. When these world patterns of cells get calcified, they're referred to as somoma bodies. We can see these on this slide. Notice the somoma bodies, for example, right here, and a zoomed in version right here. All right, now let's discuss schwannoma. As the name implies, this is a benign tumor of Schwann cells. Although this can be along any peripheral nerve, it's often localized to cranial nerve 8 at the cerebellopontine angle. When this cranial nerve is involved, patients can present with hearing loss and tinnitus. The tumor cells are S100 positive, and bilateral schwannoma tumors can be found in someone with neurofibromatosis type 2. Here's an MRI image of someone with a schwannoma. Notice the mass is at the cerebellopontine angle where the cerebellum and the pons meet, right here. All right, let's review with a quick question. A 51-year-old woman with a past medical history of hypertension and diabetes presents to the emergency department after a seizure. An MRI of the brain shows a round mass attached to the dura mater. The physician notices the tumor compresses, but does not invade the left cortex. What histopathological findings may be present in this patient? All right, this woman presents with a seizure, and an MRI shows a mass attached to the dura mater which compresses but does not invade the cortex. Collectively, this is highly suggestive of a meningioma, and the histopathological findings of a meningioma would show a world pattern of cells with somoma bodies. So the answer to this question is world pattern of cells with somoma bodies. All right, now let's move on to discuss oligodendroglioma. This is a malignant tumor of oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes are neuroglial cells that myelinate axons in the central nervous system. On imaging, a calcified tumor in the frontal lobe can be observed. Patients with this tumor often present with seizures, and a biopsy will reveal characteristic fried egg cells, which have round nuclei with a clear cytoplasm. Here's a histological image showing the characteristic fried egg appearance of cells in someone with oligodendroglioma. Notice how these cells are surrounded by perinuclear halos, which give the appearance of fried eggs. We can see that quite well, for example, right here. Okay, moving on, let's discuss pilocytic astrocytoma. 
This is a benign tumor of astrocytes and is the most common primary CNS tumor in childhood. The tumor commonly involves the cerebellum, and the tumor cells are GFAP positive. On imaging, a large cystic lesion with a brightly enhancing mural nodule can be observed. We'll look at an image of this in a second. Finally, Rosenthal fibers, which are thick eosinophilic corkscrew-appearing fibers, can be found on biopsy. Here are transverse and coronal MRI images of the brain in someone with pilocytic astrocytoma. Let's pay particular attention to the location and the appearance of the mass. Notice that the mass is located in the cerebellum and appears to have a large cystic lesion with a brightly enhancing mural nodule, which we can see right here. Here's a histological image of the Rosenthal fibers in someone with pilocytic astrocytoma. Notice the reddish corkscrew appearance of these fibers, for example, right here. All right, let's move on to discuss medulloblastoma. This is the most common malignant tumor in childhood. It's derived from the granular cells of the cerebellum, which originate from the neuroectoderm, and the tumor cells are synaptophysin positive. Small blue cells with homerite rosettes can be observed on histology. We'll look at an image of this in a second. Finally, medulloblastoma has a poor prognosis because the tumor rapidly spreads via CSF. In particular, when it metastasizes to the cauda equina, it's called drop metastasis. Here's a histological image of small blue cells with homerite rosettes. Notice the grouping of these small blue cells around the central region, for example, right here. All right, let's review with another question. A five-year-old boy presents with his mother to the emergency department for a severe headache and vomiting. The boy has no significant past medical history. An MRI of the brain shows a cerebellar cystic mass with mural nodules. What is the cellular origin of these tumor cells? All right, this is a five-year-old boy presenting with a severe headache and vomiting. The MRI shows a cerebellar cystic mass with mural nodules. This presentation is suggestive of the diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma, which recall is a benign tumor of astrocytes. So the answer to the question is astrocytes. Okay, the next topic we'll discuss is ependymoma. This is a malignant tumor of ependymal cells commonly seen in children. The tumor is most commonly found in the fourth ventricle, and when obstructed, it can cause hydrocephalus. Recall from physiology that hydrocephalus refers to a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid within the brain. On biopsy, perivascular pseudorosettes can be observed. Here's an MRI of the brain in someone with an ependymoma. Notice how the mass is located in the fourth ventricle right here. This particular patient may present with hydrocephalus since the mass is blocking the fourth ventricle and obstructing the cerebrospinal fluid flow. Here's a histological image showing perivascular pseudorosettes. Notice how the blood vessels are surrounded by tumor cells right here. All right, the last topic we'll discuss is craniopharyngioma. This is a tumor that's derived from the remnants of Rathke's pouch, which recall is an invagination of ectoderm from the roof of the mouth. It's the most common supratentorial tumor in childhood and frequently compresses the optic chiasm, leading to bitemporal hemianopsia. On imaging, calcifications can be observed. Here's an MRI image of the brain in someone with craniopharyngioma. Notice how the tumor is located in the region of the optic chiasm near the anterior pituitary gland, right here. Here's a transverse MRI image of the brain in someone with craniopharyngioma. In this image, we can see the tumor right here. And with this perspective, it's easier to see how the optic chiasm may be involved, which would give rise to bitemporal hemianopsia. All right, now that we've covered all the information, let's review with a final question. A six-year-old girl presents with her mother to the emergency department with a progressively worsening headache. Physical examination shows papilledema. An MRI of the brain demonstrates a mass in the fourth ventricle. What characteristic histological finding may be present on a biopsy of this mass? A. Homerite rosettes. B. Rosenthal fibers. C. Perivascular pseudorosettes. Or D. Fried egg appearance of cells. All right, this is a six-year-old girl presenting with a progressively worsening headache. Physical exam shows papilledema, and the MRI of the brain demonstrates a mass in the fourth ventricle. Collectively, these findings indicate the diagnosis of ependymoma. And recall that in this tumor, we may see perivascular pseudorosettes. So the correct answer is C. Again, here's a histological image showing perivascular pseudorosettes. We can see the blood vessels in the center surrounded by tumor cells. A is wrong because the Homer right rosettes are characteristically seen in patients with medulloblastoma. B is wrong because the Rosenthal fibers are characteristically seen in patients with pilocytic astrocytoma. And D is wrong because the fried egg appearance of cells are characteristically seen in patients with oligodendroglioma. So again, the correct answer is C, perivascular pseudorosettes. 
And that concludes this section.